Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Bethany Brings Books. I am going to be filming a book haul today. So this will probably be the first book haul of several that I have upcoming, um, which it feels kind of crazy because I really have not been buying a lot of books over the past few months. Um, recently, I treated myself to a trip to our used books, books uh, to a local used bookstore. And um, then after that, I also found some amazing selection of books at some of our local thrift stores. So like amazing, a lot of classics. I don't know if it's where people have been spring cleaning, but I found some amazing stuff. So I have all of that I'm gonna be talking about in another haul. But first today, I'm gonna to be talking about the books that I bought at our local used bookstore. So I'm excited to dive into this, guys. as y'all know it's that time of year and um uh it's the time of year for taxes so i did get my taxes back and paid a bunch of bills with them i was like oh i wanted i thought i want to go on a vacation and i was thinking about using some of it and then i was like no i need to pay bills i need to really put it towards some stuff that i need to pay off so i did that y'all I, I, I said i've been praying lord help me be wiser about my money and the Lord started working on me about it and I paid a bunch of bills and some different stuff that I thought if I could go ahead and get this off of me it'll be easier um, over the next few months and I won't have to worry about that debt so anyway got that taken care of but I thought you know what I'm gonna take a little bit and buy some books which I did I treated myself to a trip to the bookstore after doing all the other stuff um, buying some things that we needed. I said I'm gonna treat myself to a trip to the used bookstore. So I did that and today I'm gonna share with y'all what I got. Um, I say all that to say I don't want you to think that I just go buy books like this all the time. I don't. Um, I typically like to buy some thrift stores. I might pre-order some books occasionally um, or you know when I get paid I might order a book off Amazon, a couple of books off Amazon. Um, but I don't typically just go to the used bookstore and buy a bunch of books like this, but I did treat myself because of the tax money. So anyway, this is what I got. I have separated it into two categories. Um, the first category is going to be classics, pretty much just classics. And the second category is going to be Christian fiction and children books. So I know that's two categories, but they're in two bags, so I've kind of separated them. Um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. So, let's get started with the classics first. Um, I am definitely in a classic mood. I have been talking about classics lately a lot, reading classics, um, looking for them at thrift stores and bookstores, and just all the classic stuff has been drawing my attention, captivating me. So that's what I was really looking for when I went there. I was like, I definitely want to go. I just scoped out the whole classics book section and like just looked and looked to see what I could find because I really wanted to add to my classics shelf, which y'all see back there. Um, that's pretty much my classic shelf. Anyway, I really wanted to add to that. And so that was the focus of my trip was classics. And y'all will be able to see that from all the classics that I bought. Um, but first of all, <coughs> I found several of these Barnes & Noble classics, and I wonder if somebody just took a bunch because they had almost a lot of the more popular classic authors. They had several editions of like this, this um, several different books of this edition. It's like the Barnes & Noble hardback edition, and that was, I think it's from the 90s maybe, or the early 2000s. Um, let me see. Yeah, from 1999 so it's just a pretty edition it has a dust jacket on it and they all um i'll show you i have another one so i'll show you they look kind of similar um they all have this same look to the front of them so the same um basic look and i just thought they were really pretty so um i did pick up some of those and i had to keep myself from actually there was other books that 
for in this edition and I thought but and not only the fact that they're this is no longer the Barnes and Noble edition that is being released anymore so these are if you find these you're gonna find you're only gonna find them at thrift stores or used so I saw other ones and I was like oh should I buy them just because it's this edition even if it's a book I don't really like or even if it's a book that I don't know if I'm gonna want to read <laughs> had to restrain myself guys um, so I didn't get all the ones I saw, but I did get this Jane Austen Persuasion. I am kind of um, collecting different Jane Austen editions uh, loosely. I say loosely. I'm not like super serious about it. I'm, I'm, I'm not like, oh, every edition I see buying, but I am trying to look for some of the prettier editions and um, just collecting some. So I have read Persuasion. Um, but I don't have this edition, so I picked that one up. And then the other one that I showed y'all is uh, Middle March by George Eliot. This book is huge, guys, huge. It is the same edition, um, the same Barnes and Noble Classics edition. Um, and the cover is just so pretty. I love that picture on the cover. Um, and I don't really know anything about this. I know um, some people love it, some people hate it, so I don't know. Um, it is huge though, it's, how many pages is it? It's like 800 pages almost. So it is a chunker. So yeah, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> the only George Eliot I've read is Silas Marner, which is I'm sure a lot different than this. And Silas Marner, honestly, the first time I read it was in school and I hated it. I was like, I hate this. I don't want to read this. I reread it a couple few years ago and I liked it. I enjoyed it better. I found it, I think as an adult, I can grasp the themes a lot better. Um, but I, I still didn't love it, but I did enjoy it a lot more. So I'm not sure what I'll think about more of her works. I am looking forward to trying more by her. These next few, um, these next four I mainly got because they were on, they had a section at the back of the store of clearance. And all of these were only a dollar, guys. Only a dollar. And they're brand new. Um, well, some of them might be used. But still, they don't look like they're in that bad of shape. Um, and these are all Wordsworth Ed editions, which I recently found out that a lot of people don't like Wordsworth editions because the covers <laughs> and just a lot of people think they're don't really care for them and some of the covers are ugly but anyway they had these for only a dollar and I thought I'm gonna pick these up because um they're only a dollar so the first one is Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens um and the next one is Tom Sawyer Abroad and Tom Sawyer Detective I have never even heard of these. I only knew there was Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. So, I didn't know that there was these two. Um, but this is by Mark Twain. And then I got Washington Square by Henry James. Don't have a clue what this is about other than I briefly looked at the back. Don't know. That cover is ugly to me though. Um, and then three men in a boat and three men on a bubble, bubble? I don't know how you say that. I don't know. Whatever. Drone. Drone. I feel like I heard somebody say that three men in a boat was really funny. I feel like I heard someone talk about that, but I don't know for sure. Um, but there's that one. Don't really know anything about it. There's in, I thought I had heard someone talk about it. <laughs> Um, and then I picked up this edition of The Count of Monte Cristo. I did, y'all, I did find this in the Barnes & Noble one, the other hardback. But I put it back because it was a bit more expensive. I think it was the Barnes & Noble. Um, it was quite a bit more expensive. It was like, this was $3 and the other one was like $9. <laughs> and, um, and so I just picked up this one because... Holly from Lovely Day with Holly mentioned this recently and asked me had I read it and um, she was talking about how she enjoyed it and then someone else was talking about this and honestly I had no clue what this was, this was about and I saw another booktuber talking about it and some of the stuff they were saying I was like hmm that actually sounds interesting like I had never 
heard about what the plot of the story was. I've heard the name of it many times, but I had never really heard the plot of the story. So that intrigued me. It caught my interest and I thought, I'm going to pick that up. So I was specifically looking for this, for a copy of this, and I found it. And this is also another chunker, like very thick, huge, <laughs> huge. Um, um, and then I found two, these two I feel like were, are kind of treasures. Um, Anthony Trollope has been hard for me to find and uh, I've been wanting to pick up more of him because I've heard good things. I feel like I'm gonna like him. I've heard really good things. So I found this, The Belton Estate in Castle Richmond. Um, again, don't know anything about them. I just know I really wanna try Trollope. So yeah, and these were not very expensive. This one was 225 and this one was 350. So there's those two. Um, and then I also picked up this edition of Eight Cousins by Louisa May Alcott. I do have this book in another edition, but I'm trying to collect these editions. Like I found several of these in this edition. I found Little Women in it and I actually read it out of this edition. Um, and so I've been trying to collect some in these. They're really pretty. I just, I think they're pretty. They have like the leaves on the background. Um, I don't know, I just think they're pretty. So yeah, I don't know what this is about. I haven't read it. Um, Want to read more Alcott because I read Little Women and loved it. Oh, this is another um, one of the one dollar ones, and that is Dompey and Son by Charles Dickens. So yeah, this was another one that was only a dollar. Um, that cover also is ugly to me. <sighs> but yeah, um, and then I picked up Anna Karenina by Leo Toy Tolstoy. Um, I really want to get into reading some Russian literature. I talked about that on one of my recent videos. I think I have this. I don't think I have a copy of Anna Karenina. Um, this is Ch Phantom Classics translated by Joel Carmichael. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going to start with Russian literature. I don't know who I'm going to, I don't know who I'm going to start with. Um, but I've heard a bit about this. I have never read it. Don't really know like majorly what it's about. But I have heard some people enjoy it and um, some of the booktubers that I follow. So I picked that one up. Um, and then I found this No Fear Shakespeare book, Shakespeare Side by Side with Plain English, which I had just been looking at. I had actually just found a copy of The Taming of the Shrew at the library. And I checked it out because one of my goals this year is to read a Shakespeare. Um, but when I found this, Macbeth, um, I was like, okay, I'm just going to get this one and take the other one back to the library, even though it's a different play. I felt like, I know it's going to take me a while to read it. So I took the other one back to the library and I was like, I'll just use this one and read this one. This will probably be the first Shakespeare that I tackle unless I find another one in this edition before I read this. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's Macbeth. I want to try Shakespeare. I am not down for trying it in the original language all by itself so I was like yeah I'm gonna try it in this because it's got the original and then on the next page it's got it in modern English so I'm actually in really looking forward to this honestly um I'm intrigued I'm interested to see now that I know I can read them side by side I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out then I picked up The Stories of William Trevor. Now this was with the classics. I do not know who William Trevor is, but um, on the back, it talked about how it is, I think this, he is like an Irish author. I think this is different. I don't know if it's short stories or what. I don't know. I think it's short stories or novellas. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, oh, that's what it was. I read the little introduction thing. It said that he, um, he's like from Ireland. And so I figured that this is, would be maybe classics in Irish literature. I don't know that. Um, but I just thought it'd be interesting to try Irish literature, to try venturing into another, um, genre of literature or another I don't know how would you say that just like the same way I want to try Russian literature I thought it'd be interested inter interesting to try some Irish literature now I think this 
this may be considered, this will probably be, be considered more modern classic because he was born in the 20s. So this is not super old. Um, like I said, I don't know. If you've ever heard of him, if you know anything about him, let me know. I picked it up mainly because I wanted to try reading some classic <coughs> literature, whether modern or old. I'm only try reading some in other from other countries. Um, and then I did pick up this edition of Wuthering Heights, and I think this is a very pretty edition. It's also the Barnes and Noble Classics. Wuthering Heights is one that I talked about in a recent video that I um I don't really know how I feel about rating it. I did read it. And I do want a pretty edition, which is why I bought this, because the edition that I have is not really that great. Um, so I thought I want a pretty edition to put on my shelf, but it's not one that I'll collect all the editions just because I have mixed feelings about it. So um, I talked about it in another video. I'll try to put link it here. Um, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I, I I think that as a literary work, it definitely merits its standing as a classic um, because it's the goal of what of em, what Emily Bronte was doing. The the focus was very powerful in, in the like the, what she was trying to do with the story, but at the same time, as in far as enjoying it and the story itself, was not a happy story. <laughs> so, yeah. I bought this because I want to keep an edition on my shelf, a pretty edition, and eventually I will probably reread it. But, um, yeah, that's why I got it. Um, the last three in the classic section are all kind of from a similar vibe, similar, similar, um, goings on or whatever. Um, the first one is, uh, Midnight on the, Midnight. Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie, and I have really been wanting to read this because I want to watch it. So, um, and I did not have a copy, so I found this one. It's a hardback um, from the Agatha Christie Mystery Collection, and um, yeah, I mainly just picked it up because I want to read this, and I couldn't find it in the edition. I'm collecting all of the like newer editions i don't remember what they are i have them they're up there at the top on my shelf um they're the ones that you see a lot on like a uh, book outlet they're newer editions and i'm trying to collect all of them in that edition but i do have a few in older editions and um that edition was too pricey that was like that was like new and they wanted full price for it and i was like you know i'm not paying that much so i found this one this used edition um, then I also found this, Crime for Christmas, 16 Tales of Murder and Mistletoe. Authors include Agatha Christie, um, H.R.F. Keating, Ellis Peters. I don't know any of the other ones. I just saw Agatha Christie and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I wanna get that. Um, but it just, I like, it just looks fun to me. It's, it's like really fun to read at Christmas. Um, and it is a, it is hardback as well. And it has... Who all does it have in it? Um, and it, it just has a bunch of different short stories. Uh, it has a Wilkie Collins, Thomas Hardy, H.C. Uh, Bailey, Edgar Wallace, Agatha Christie, Fergus Hume, Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, Raymond Allen. It just has a, hand, a bunch of different um, short stories. So that one I am really excited to read this year at Christmas time, hopefully. And then, lastly in the... Um, classics theme I found this and this is not really a classic but it is about an author who writes classics and um, it's Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebooks I was so excited to find this um, I think I saw it a long time ago on Book Outlet and it got gone before I could order it but this just I'm so excited <laughs> to read this and I I'm not, I don't want to read it before I read her books, so it might be a while before I read this um, because I'm still very much, uh, very much have a lot, have many, many more of her books to go. I've only read like 11, I think. Um, but yeah, this is just like her notebooks and stuff that she kept, her ideas that she wrote down for books, for stories, her thoughts while she was writing stories. Um, 
So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I'm just excited about it. I think it would be really cool to see um, in her head while she was writing all of these books to get an idea of what was in her head and her mind. So that's what I got in the first bag. And I'll show y'all the bag that I bought to carry all these in because I always forget to bring my own bags. They don't have bags there. Um, but this is the bag that I got. It's really cute. It's like a comic book. Um, and then the second, the second half, this is going to be a lot shorter. I did not get as many books in this category. Um, and so we're talking about the Christian fiction ones first. Didn't get a ton, just a handful. Um, like I said, very classic heavy, but, um, I got with Murder at the Mikado, Mikado, I don't know how you say that, but I have several books in this series and I've never read any of them, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, they're drew farthering mysteries and they definitely have like they look like they would have the agatha christie vibes i think they're set in the 20s or 30s um so and i did not have this one i have like three or four of the other books in this series and this is published by bethany house i've never seen anything else published by this author just this series so i don't know but i'm interested to read it because um we don't see this, I don't see this really very much in the Christian fiction genre, this like murder mystery um, theme. So I'm interested in reading these. Then I picked up The Protector by Dee Henderson. I actually already have this book, but this is, I saw this sticker on the front. It's an autographed copy. I was like, ooh, I want to get this. So um, yeah, it's autographed by Dee Henderson. So that was the main reason that I picked this up was because it was autographed and I thought it would be really cool to have an autographed book by her. Um, and then I picked up these two in the same um, series. These are secret. In, these are guidepost books um, from Secrets of Wayfarer, Wayfarers Inn series. I have some other books in this series and I have not read them but they look really interesting um they're both all by like christian authors this one's by tracy bateman and this one's by leslie gold um they both just look really interesting to me um one of them it's, is it says it's about a frame print of eliza from uncle tom's cabin goes missing and then it's talking about the underground railroad museum and different stuff it just sounds really interesting historical and this one also sounded interesting so I was like I I want to pick these up to go with the rest of my in my series um I'll, also this is another D Henderson Danger in the Shadows this is the prequel to the O'Malley series I need to get that sticker off the front um but I did not have the prequel I have read it years ago I didn't have a copy so I snatched this up when I saw it because I had been wanting to find a copy and found this one and then the last Christian fiction book that I bought is With Every Breath by Elizabeth Camden. I am collecting her books because she is one of my absolute favorite historical Christian fiction authors. Um, I have read this one several years ago and I loved it. I really enjoyed it. I would love to reread it. Um, I was really excited to find my own edition um, or my own copy. Uh, and I also I think the cover is so pretty. Like I just think that her outfit so it looks so springtime -y. Um, and like even the side, so pretty, but I love Elizabeth Camden's books. All right, guys, we're almost at the end here. So wrapping this up, I picked up a few kids books. Um, I found these two, Richard Scarry, the best world book ever and cars and trucks and things that go. Um, and my kids, I, I, my kids actually have really not looked at a lot of his books, but I really want to introduce them to them more. Um, and they're just so cute. Like, that one's mealtime, keeping healthy. So I really thought it, I want to try to introduce them to his books more. They're, they're just so cute. I love them. Things we do. And then this one is cars and trucks and things that go. I don't even know if I said his name right. I don't know if it's scary or scary. I don't know how you say it. 
And then I did pick up another little golden book, guys. Um, I picked up Sleeping Beauty. I don't have this one, and I thought my little girl would love to read it, so I picked that one up. This American Girl book, Meet Marie Grace. I do not have this one or this series. Um, most most of the American Girl books that I have are ones that I had growing up, and so the newer ones that have been released, most of them I don't have. So I thought I would like to start looking for those. So I did find this one. Um, and this one is about a girl in New Orleans in 1853. Um, and then I picked up this, The Smuggler's Treasure. It's an American Girl History Mystery. I don't know if I actually have this or not already, though. I know I have a few, so I don't know. I'm hoping I don't have this one yet, but these just look very interesting to me. The American Girl Mysteries, Historical Mysteries. So, I picked that one up. Then I found this, and I don't know if any of y'all ever read these growing up, let me know, but I loved these books growing up. I checked them out from the library over and over again and read them so many times. They were also released by American Girl, but they are Amelia's notebooks, like her journals. I just loved these so much. Each one is made to look like it's in like a, um, what do you call it, like a a school, one of those school books. I can't remember what they're called. Um, is it a composite notebook? I don't remember. Anyway, each one in the, in the front, it looks like a journal really, basically. And I just thought they were so cool because they were like her journal entries and then she would draw in there and um, I don't know. They're just funny. I just thought they were so funny. She would like, it was made to look like her journal. Like she drew stuff in it and she taped stuff in it and um, I loved, I loved these growing up, so, and I had forgotten about them until recently, and I was like, oh, I want to get these again, and introduce my kids to them when they get older, especially Marilla. And then the last three that I got, um, this is a Hardy Boys book, I don't think I have this one, it's one of the case files, and I'm trying to collect those. Um, and then I picked up Shades of Grey. It's the winner of the Scott O'Dell Award, and I thought it sounded interesting. It's about um, a 12-year-old boy after the Civil War, um, some of the things that he goes through. And because it was had, did win the Scott O'Dell Award, I thought um, I was interested in reading it. And then lastly, I picked this up. It is a Newbery Medal winner, and I'm trying to collect those as well. Um, it's called A Single Shard by Linda Sue Park, and I think it's set in maybe Korea in the 12th century, um, is what it says on the back, so I don't really know anything about it other than it is a Newberry book, and I wanted to collect those. So, oh, and in the bag, this bag is so cute, I love it. It looks like, like a record player, um, it looks like a record player, so cute. So, anyway, guys, that is the haul. It's pretty substantial. Um, but, anyway, thank y'all for watching with me. And I'm really excited now that I've done this. I can put these on my shelf. I'm so excited. I'm going to have to make room. But I'm excited. So, anyway, guys, thank y'all for watching. And um, I would love to hear your thoughts about these books. If you've read any. If you have any that you think I should read. Um, go ahead and read. What are your thoughts about these? Um, I would love to know. So thank you for watching, guys. I will talk to you later. Bye.